why is um why is obesity specifically um something you're passionate about and something you're passionate about helping people with well a couple things first of all i i just have a knack for it like and my wife has a very good knack for it because she helped me my wife is the one who figured figures out most of the methodology we use for our coaching clients um but if you look at the the thing that causes the most suffering and disease illness death burden upon our society it is inarguably obesity uh, the, in the united states alone we spend 3.8 trillion dollars a year on healthcare expenditure uh, healthcare burden 3.8 trillion uh, roughly 80 to 90 percent of that depending on which statistics you go by is chronic illness related so chronic illness and disease is well over three trillion dollars of our collective uh, healthcare burden which we all share in like we all the health yeah. increased healthcare costs, all that stuff, we all share it, right? And then 80 to 90% of that are chronic illness and disease, depending on which statistic you choose. And this, this goes anywhere from World Health Organization to CDC, to Johns Hopkins, to those sorts of things. Uh, depending on which statistic you choose, 80 to 90% of that is mitigated by lifestyle change, mostly dealing with weight and obesity. Hmm. Um, obesity leads to almost all major chronic illness and comorbidity diseases that cause the most death in the world or in our country and even in for the, for, for the pandemic. Yeah. Cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease is 80 to 90 percent avoidable by lifestyle change. Type 2 diabetes is 90 percent uh, avoidable by type by uh, by lifestyle mitigation and change, weight loss. Uh, 50 cases of all strokes, like 35 percent of all cases of cancer are avoidable by lifestyle change. Uh, including, you know, not drinking as much, quitting smoking and eating in a healthy diet, getting proper exercise and not being obese, you know? So if you look at it, we could, I mean, we collectively could save trillions of dollars a year, not to mention the 1.7 million lives lost to chronic illness and disease every single year in America, which is also 80 to 90% avoidable by lifestyle change. You know, That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, so when we're talking about like, that's why when, when people started freaking in, in April 2020, I was like, well, how, this it's it was the greatest missed opportunity in public health uh, policy ever, because instead of doing every little thing we should have done to lower the number of high risk people and also unburden our healthcare system, because just to be real, like that money also allots for well over 50 percent of the actual bed burden of the healthcare industry. And for those of you that are, that are probably listening and wondering like, well, this, why does this fitness dude like, no, I was a healthcare executive before I became every damn day fitness mm. for over, over a dozen years. I mean, I multi-unit healthcare operations executive up and down the Eastern United States with a focus on elderly people, long-term care and hospitals you know, and nutrition, you know? So, uh, when I say that like the vast majority of people that take up the most, uh, care level needed in hospitals and long-term cares and stuff like that are people with chronic illness. It's just, it's a fact. 91% yeah. of all prescription medication is chronic illness related. 91% of all prescription medication. That's an enormous number. Like people have very little idea. And the reason why I believe, and I, you know, this is going to be, this is where people call me a conspiracy theorist. I mean, it's trillions of dollars that could be avoided in burden that's trillions of dollars in revenue for these companies Yeah, that, that they would not have. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. Jeez. And I mean, that's so when, when you wonder why in like, when you think about April, like March and April of 2020, like why, why, why have we still not even discussed like, Hey, you should lead a healthy lifestyle, get vitamin D, get out in the sun, get exercise, reduce your body weight. When we know I actually just, uh, right before we hopped on here, uh, I, I posted some. I posted a, a study from April seventh of twenty twenty that said that obesity was a high risk factor for uh, for you know bad outcome and death from COVID nineteen. Yeah, and we, we've known this for two years, and it's still not even discussed. Like Fauci has Fauci has said something about obesity one time. It was in an interview with Matthew McConaughey. I mean, like, like he hasn't actually on the news or anything like that said, Hey, get, lose your weight. And he, even, even then he said that that's why we couldn't afford not to lock down because we have so many obese, people, you know? So it's just this weird thing where we clearly chose the, the, the path of ill health. Like the, the people your age, I don't know if you were in college two years ago or whatever, but like 
the people, people, uh, the college kids had all been at college for a couple months, all gone on spring break. So they, a bunch of people from around the country gathered together at their university and then crawled all over each other and partying because college, that's what college kids should be doing at least. They should be having a good fucking time while learning, experiencing life, like learning about each other and learning about themselves. They all then dispersed to different areas around the world for spring breaks, meeting other people from other colleges. So the, um, imagine the cross-contamination we're going with. Yeah. Of, at the time, there was a pandemic going on of, of a viral illness that had been around the world. It had been in the United States for months at this time of a highly contagious pathogen. So then we send them back to their schools. And instead of saying, you know what, we've, when, when all the lockdowns, so when they all, we all start talking about 14 days or 15 days to slow the spread, Instead of housed, instead of the, like sheltering them in place, we sent them back to their middle-aged parents and elderly grandparents after they had probably been exposed, you know, almost undoubtedly. If so yeah. we send them across, back across the country, it's. We, I just found it where the public health policy, and I've helped write disaster policy plans for entire counties in the United States before. It went completely contra to what we would normally do in trying to make sure that everybody just kind of stayed in place. For a couple of weeks, see if they had it, anything. But we moved everybody around. It was kind of crazy. And obesity, you know, to back to your original question, obesity. If we could reduce that down, we would have never been worried about take being able to take care of people in the healthcare system. Fifty percent of the birth, fifty percent of the bed burden was already taken up by chronic illness and disease. Even if we reduced that down by ninety percent, so we would reduce it down by reduce the hospital burden down forty five percent. You know, I mean, so we could have, it would never be an issue for us to take care of people. And not to mention that, like, and I, I say this to people all the time, while it may sound like I'm very, very, very mean, uh, because I say very clear truths that break this bubble, this candy coated shell that the world lives in, that you can be 300 pounds and still healthy or whatever. Um, uh, I don't want people to suffer, die and be ill. Like, I mean, I, I, being in healthcare, I've seen more than my fair share of diabetic amputations. Like anybody that's never, like if you've never smelled like, you know, necrosis of, necrosis of the feet or, uh, or you know, uh, necrotizing fasciitis in, in between skin folds of an obese person. I mean, if you've never smelled, you've been, been able to smell the rot of flesh that that is, uh, maybe, maybe that's why you, you, you think I'm mean, but trust me on this. If me saying something that hurts you a little bit and makes you cry, that's way better than them having to cut off your legs or sure. you, di you dying from, your, from an infection between your skin folds that actually eats your flesh away in a very painful manner.